Okay, so I'm Fred Simon, and uh, I'm going to try to talk in uh, five minutes about the next uh, revolution of the physics. And uh, basically the conflict between general relativity and quantum theory. So all of you know exactly what is general relativity and quantum theory and quantum mechanics. So I'm going to go quite fast. And you know that, of course, they don't match and they don't meet each other. The main reason is, uh, like Einstein said about general relativity, he thinks that God doesn't play with dice. And inside quantum theory, it's the basics. There is a lot of that. Uh, both of them are kind of hard to grasp for most people, and this is why the physics community and basically all the uh, people are stop kind of communicating with the public, which is really a dream. So general relativity really uh, proves its uh, uh, specific behavior at big scale or missing speed. And uh, the main thing is that time and space are really linked together and they are flexible. And it's quite amazing how much inside the global uh, discussion and the way that people think about space and time is still not, after 100 years of Einstein theory, it's not part of our language that space and time is one single thing and that the space-time deformation is why we are standing here on the planet Earth. If you are standing here, it's because time is modified by the planet. Quantum theory, it's the other side, it's at small scale, and here it did break really, really everything, the Schrodinger cat and so on. And the main reason is that you cannot really measure things accurately and things start to get very, very blurry, and the particle can go in all kinds, in actually all the different paths from point A to point B in the same time. So, there is another point that is really important, in my point of view, is that Today we know that there is no infinite in the universe. The infinite are just a result of the mathematical equation that we are doing and uh, they are popping out. But the universe has a finite size, which is quite big, 156 billion light years. And on the other side, there is a small uh, uh, ground, which is the planet size, which is minus 35 meters. Between those two, this is where we live, and there is quite a lot of room. It's one followed by 60 to zero, so you can do a lot of things between the planet size and the size of the universe. But still, in the bottom and in the top, we are living in a bonded kind of universe and there are no infinite. So, the next step that everybody is trying to do for the last 70 years is to quantize general relativity or to find a quantum gravity theory. Uh, the lesson for quantum gravity is that space-time is dynamic, so it moves. And the lesson for quantum mechanics and quantum theory is that everything that moves has quanta. Everything that moves cannot move with the continuous behavior. It has to jump, to do some tick, tick, tick. So what does it mean? Is that we may have a quantum space-time. And so this is the other theory, and this one I really, really love. It's basically saying that, I'm going to go after, it's basically saying that everything that we are is just space itself is made of little tick and little pieces and basically we are living in a universe that doesn't protect anything. Ah, I messed up my stuff. What is contact gravity? It's grains of space itself. Space, we know it's smooth. We are really living in space and everything is smooth. But to have a smooth space, if you take the grain of the sun and the sunny beach, everything is smooth on the sunny beach. If you look into very strong detail, you can see the grain of sand, and you have to go from one point to another of the grain of sand by jumps. In the between, there is nothing. There is no space. There is no time. There is absolutely nothing. The size here is, of course, very, very small. So what do we know about this kind of theory and uh, thing? There is no direct experiment, and that's the main issue. And there is no much hints also, but we still have a lot, a lot of thoughts that are in the dark, you know, dark matter, dark energy, and all kinds of dark things that are popping up. So they are doing pure theoretical requests, all the scientists, but for 70 years, there is 1,300 theories that are doing string theory and spending huge, huge amount of money and millions, and they, are not, they didn't discover anything. Still, it's the particle physics approach, they came up with the string theory. There is the general relativity approach, which is the loop of the what is the loop quantum gravity? There is also, of course, a lot of other things, but you have to stay open-minded. On the dark side, the string theory, they are very tempting, 
but they need extra dimension, they need super symmetry and all kinds of things and really it really doesn't look like good. On the quantum gravity, you have this spin form and the space itself is quantized and it moves all the time. And all the particles are made of space itself. So I have only five seconds, but this is what the latest research from a year ago about the quantum gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.